was 16 years old, I heard the Reverend Bob Richards speak. Remember him, the Wheaties guy? It's Kathleen, uh, uh, pole vault champion Olympics. Bob Richards looked over a group of these young kids in a basketball camp and said, the Lord must have loved ordinary people because he made so many of us. And there I am, 16, thinking I'm special. Here's a man I respect, said, the Lord must have loved ordinary people. He made so many of us ordinary. And I was, you know, you get a little down at 16 when someone's telling you that. And then he said the line that changed my life at 16 that I felt then, and I feel it the same way today. He said, every single day, in every walk of life, ordinary people do extraordinary things. Ordinary people accomplish extraordinary things. Yes, that was the great Jim Valvano from North Carolina State in ESPN's 30 for 30, which I highly recommend you watching. And I'm here to announce that Vance Pilkington, yes, an ordinary guy, as far as I know, this is his first time in the pool, takes it down, winning 12, a whopping $1,200 for first place. Nice job, Vance. Congratulations. Vance is now joining this illustrious list of former champions who participated this year, including people like Scott Dennis, a two-time champion who won the first uh, March Madness Vector Marketing Corporation pool back in 1994. Earl Kelly, a former champion. Jeff Nixon, Chris Cooper, Bruce Goodman, a former champion who inspired Al DiLeonardo to enter the pool this year. And Al made a fine showing. Also, Chris Heigl, a two-time champion. Mike Schmidt, a two-time champion, was in this year. Rebecca Flowers, a two-time champion who inspired Kathleen Woods to employ her method of picking by school colors, which resulted in Kathleen winning in 2008. And also, of course, Joe Gianosa was back in once again this year. But all were defeated by Vance Pilkington. I feel like I should have a British accent whenever I say that name. Vance Pilkington. He won the pool. All right. Another first-time participant, Gavin Brontoli takes down $800 for second place. Travis Lewis with a great showing, having picked Michigan and Louisville in the championship game, uh, takes uh, home $600 for third place. He did have Michigan to win it all. Still held on for third place. Joe Gianosa wins $400 for fourth place. And Joe has gotten the champion of the NCAA tournament picked correctly the last three years in a row. Yes, an amazing showing, getting the champion correct. Even though it was the overall number one seed the last two years, still very solid. Joe had Connecticut three years ago. He's got the champion right the last three years in a row. So next year, when the brackets are revealed and the picks are revealed, we will know the winner based on who Joe has picked. Chat or not, Chad Vordenberg comes in fifth place, $320. Al De Leonardo garners a much-needed $240 for sixth place. Brent Bridges notches $120 for seventh place. And rounding out this year's Elite Eight is Chris Valentino, who won $80, ousting Michael Cassetta and Ken Schaefer in a tiebreaker. Nice job, Chris. Rachel Schaefer finished just one point from the Elite Eight but took down the ceremonial top chick honors by one point over Jackie Miyasaki. By the way, this was the third year in a row that Rachel won that distinction, starting a dynasty of her own. Rachel suggested that maybe top chick should win a free entry the following year. No! However, I'm making a one-time offer. Since Rachel Schaefer has won top chick three years in a row, Rachel, I will pay for your entry next year, all right? As long as you send me the college team hat of your choice. Send me a Jayhawks hat, send me a Billikens hat, send me a Tigers hat, whatever you want, just send it, all right? And I'll wear it in a video next year and honor you even further. Nice job. The dregs of the pool, page three, the losers who could not muster up more than 54 points in this year's pool, included people like Chris Heigl and Greg Shiraki with 54. Jeff Bry, Victor Paredes, 
and Vito the Meathead with 53. By the way, if I'm mysteriously offed at some point in the coming weeks, you will all know it's because I called Joe Gianosa's New Yorker cousin Vito a meathead, which he probably is. He probably wears shirts like this all the time. With 52 points, Mike Sauce and Chris Oaks. Terrible. 51, Kalina Varen, Jason Flynn, Jimmy Hunt. Horrid. 50 points, Jake Doherty and Robert Gonzalez. Yes, please enter again next year, fellas. Mustering up only 49 points. Tyler Park. Ty Wilda. Jake Solis. Greg Owen. And former champions Kathleen Woods and Mike Schmid. Only 49. Week. The last five in the pool. The bowels of the pool. 48 points for Katie Haney and her heinous picks. Clint Suckaloo. Susan Potter, who made a strong bid to capture the award, formerly named after her husband. 39 points, almost in last, was Jennifer Donald. Urgh. Justin Donald's second entry. I don't know what it is, but it was terrible. And in last place, of course, was Logan Toski for the second year in a row. And for coming in last two years in a row, Logan, we will honor you officially by naming the last place award the Logan Toski Award from now on. Logan, please do not win your own award again next year. That would be ridiculous. All right. I have some commentary. Charles Barkley is an idiot. That's my first commentary. He babbles. He has no logical reasoning for any of his insights. And he's basically just there because he's a buffoon and people watch wondering what dumb thing he will say next. I also think Doug Gottlieb is a tool. Not for his white man comment, by the way, which was obviously an ill-advised bad joke and nothing more. But all the other stuff that he says. And he has such attitude when he talks, too. And he was criticizing after the game tonight John Beeline for leaving Trey Burke out so much of the first half when Trey Burke had two fouls. And he said he ended up with two fouls. So you basically just took him out of the game. Doug, Trey Burke ended up with four fouls. He nearly fouled out. And his replacement was unconscious and scored 17 points in 17 minutes in the first half. So... Tells that guy to shut up. Nance and Kellogg, they're a pleasure to listen to, I think. Nance stays out of the way of the game. Uh, you know, he doesn't uh, get in the way. I, I like the fact that Kellogg also has a lot of enthusiasm. He's, I don't think he's the best, but he offers up some good insights. Um, and speaking of enthusiasm, Gus Johnson is always fun to listen to, and he should be on hand for every close game. Uh, he's great. Someone at Cutco, by the way, needs to send the NCAA a pair of super shears. So these guys don't have to cut down the nets with one of those orange-handled pieces of crap in the future. Gonzaga. There was a lot of debate about whether they should be a number one seed. Actually, there wasn't much debate, and I was always wondering why there wasn't much debate. Well, their loss in the second game pretty much makes it impossible for a mid-major team to ever lock down a number one seed again. And at the same time, the performance of teams like Wichita State and LaSalle hopefully will ensure that more mid-major teams get into the tournament are picked with those last few spots instead of scrubs like Maryland and Virginia and Alabama who basically buy their early season victories by scheduling a bunch of patsies instead of challenging themselves and truly improving their players by scheduling some tough opponents. So hopefully they learned a lesson. College basketball just rules over the NBA. So much more heart, so much more emotion, so much more fun. A great game by both teams tonight. It's clear that the two best teams ended up in the championship game, uh, which doesn't always happen. It was really great to see. And uh, what a game they played. You know, it was awesome. Uh, really a lot of great games here in the latter stages of the tournament. I hope that most of these kids are back next year. I hope Kevin Ware comes back. And uh, already looking forward to uh, next November when the new season begins. March Madness two 2014 starts 
in 345 days. So some of you may want to start working on making your payment now so that uh, you're clear before the tourney starts next year. We had over 100 entries this year. Our biggest ever should be even more next year. I'm sad it's over. Can't wait for next March. And until then, you know what it's all about now, baby.